This one here is a map of the solar system as we know it. Uh, the inner planets, this is the orbit of planet Pluto. And this here is the orbit that I have proposed for uh, the 10th planet. And here's where we think it is right about now in its orbit. If planet X exists, we are not alone in this solar system. Earth, the seventh planet. The sacred number seven, seven days in the week, seven days of Genesis, seven tablets of creation. A case can be made for historical coincidence, but to Zechariah Sitchin, this kind of numeric repetition points to more than just legend. Whichever way you look at it, the facts about this 10th planet are nothing less than astonishing. The story of this planet, as told by the Sumerians on their seven tablets of creation, begins four billion years ago, when our solar system was much younger and our own planet Earth did not yet exist. The surviving historical records of the Sumerians reveal the story of an intruder planet, Nibiru, which appeared out of deep space, drawn into the center of our solar system by the planetary pull of Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter. On an opposing orbital path with the seventh planet, a planet referred to in Sumerian records as Tiamat, Nibiru's new orbit around the Sun placed the two planets on a collision course. Sumerian cosmogony answers many puzzles that still baffle modern science. Central to it was the tale of a celestial collision and knowledge of a solar system with 12 members. As they draw near, one of the satellites of Nibiru crashes into Tiamat, cracking the planet. Subsequent collisions smash half of Tiamat completely, breaking the pieces into what develops mostly into the asteroid. This is referred to in the Bible and Sumerian text as the firmament. The other half of Tiamat becomes Earth. The Earth is thrust into a new orbital position, carrying with it Tiamat's main satellite, our moon. Nibiru, the intruder, is cast into a permanent clockwise silver orbit, returning to Earth's neighborhood once each 3,600 years, forever becoming the 12th member of our solar system. This tale of creation echoed through all the ancient cultures, becoming part of the scientific knowledge that we find in the Old Testament, in the creation story of Genesis. In the aftermath of the collision, the biblical creator Elohim proclaims, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And Elohim called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas. If earth is the orbital remains of a planetary collision, scientists believe that the most obvious place to look for planetary scarring is seven miles below the surface of the Pacific Ocean. When in the heights heavens had not been named, and below earth had not been called, naught but primordial Apsu, their begetter, Mamu, and Tiamat, she who bore them all, their waters were mingled together. Two planets mingled together. The biblical passage of Genesis reads, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. If we apply the knowledge of the Mesopotamian text to the biblical text, the correct reading of the book of Genesis emerges especially in relation to waters. And Elohim said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament, dividing the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And Elohim called the firmament heaven. Upper waters? Lower waters? What does the Bible mean by this? The Sumerians describe Uranus and Neptune as watery planets. What are the conclusions of modern science? 
In 1979, 1980, and 1981, Pioneer and Voyager visit Jupiter and Saturn with their many moons. During these missions, water is discovered virtually everywhere, as ice on the surface and as water below the surface. The Sumerians' ancient claim of water on Jupiter's moons Io and Europa is proven. The Sumerian records indicate water on Enceladus and Tethys, two of the moons of Saturn, and in that planet's spectacular rings. The findings of NASA confirm these ancient Sumerian assertions, giving further credence and clarity to the biblical quote, waters above the firmament. Halley's Comet travels through space, itself a spectacular confirmation of the biblical claim, waters above the firmament. Nearly four billion years old, with a core half the size of Manhattan Island, this mystic traveler throws off water at the rate of 30 to 70 tons a second, with enough mass to continue its purge for thousands of years. Was ancient man aware of this spectral vision? The unusual celestial object reported in Babylonian texts to have been seen in the year 164 BC is believed to have been Halley's Comet. Significantly, it was considered the scepter star of Israel. In the Bible, the book of Numbers records, I see it, though not now. I behold it, though it is not near. A star of Jacob did course. The scepter of Israel did arise. Halley's Comet and its lights are truly the messengers of Genesis. When the 19th century astronomer Schiaparelli announced that he had seen canals on Mars, he was ridiculed. So too was the respected American astronomer Lowell in 1916. When NASA's unmanned spacecraft visits Mars in the 70s and again in the 90s, ample evidence of water in that planet's past is revealed. Images from expeditions to Venus and Mars exhibit visual evidence of dry sea, lake and riverbeds characteristic of the biblical reference waters above the firmament. Even Mercury, so close to the sun, seems to have had a watery past, yet maintaining ice at its polar caps. The NASA report reads, quote, we are forced to no other conclusion but that we are seeing the effects of water on Mars, unquote. And, quote, Mars once had enough water to form a layer several meters deep over the whole surface of the planet, unquote. What we previously believed to be a dry and barren planet unexpectedly emerges as a planet where water once existed in abundance. Mars joins Venus, Mercury, the Earth, and most recently the Earth's moon in corroborating the Sumerian concept of water below the firmament.